And, uh, and what happens then is that uh, in the hospital, they give you a series of gamma globular shots. Now, we don't know what gamma globulin is yet, and we don't even know kind of what antibody is yet, because we've got that in the lecture yet. But we know that there is this stuff, this gamma globulin, it's some kind of a globular protein. Uh, and this was produced by some horse down in Lexington that got exposed to these same intestinal bacteria and produced these antibodies. And we believe that horse, we extract these out, and we inject those into you. And lo and behold, you don't get sick. You just have a minor kind of gastrointestinal distress, as opposed to just pooping your brains out and dying from dehydration. Uh, and so what have we given you? Did you make any kind of or have any defense in place? No. The horse in Lexington that got exposed to these particular bugs that got taken off the track and didn't run well, and so now it's a antibody producer. Um, that's where you're getting the antibody and globulins from. Do they last? No. They do their job, whatever that is, which we'll talk about in just a second, and then your body deals with this protein, breaks them down, recirculates them, recycles them, does all these kinds of things uh, at that point, but you were kept from being severely sickened by the trip to the septic tank. That's called artificial because you didn't do anything, correct? And it's passive because it doesn't last. So it's an artificial passive type of immunity. Works for the time being, works quite well. Okay, let's come back to this acquired immunity and look at that sheet again that I gave you, voila. And the other sheet that looks like this, which is very similar to what we looked at yesterday when we looked at this blood cascade and we saw that some cells coming from those hemocytoblasts, the stem cells found in bone marrow, are going to give rise to lymphocytes. So let's take a quick peek at this. Uh, so you see the bone at the top, red bone marrow, and we know that these hemocytoblasts, which are produced in there, um, are going to typically fall into one of two categories. Uh, one of these group of cells is going to enter the circulatory system and it's going to make its way to the thymus and it's going to be stimulated by thymosins, thyroid, or not thyroid, thymus hormones, I almost said the wrong one there, thymus hormones that are going to cause these cells to differentiate. Because they have differentiated and matured in the thymus gland, we're going to call them T cells. And they're going to spend some time there and they are going to leave finally the thymus gland and they're going to make their way either back to red bone or out into the, uh, the circulatory system and eventually into your lymphatics. So we can find them in a variety of places. Many of them are going to end up in lymphatic tissue, nodules, nodes, or spleen. We've got some, though, that are going to stay in bone marrow. And sometimes what will happen is that they will leave the bone marrow uh, they'll go out into lymphatics and they can come back to bone marrow again, but usually they are going to eventually also end up in lymphatic tissue. And because they have matured basically in bone, we call them B cells. Easy way to remember that. They are out there now, and our quest is to determine how and in what way they are involved and with specific immunity. So this is just, in your book, you got something very similar to that, very similar. But take a look at the other sheet again, and look down below, where it says specific immunity, and it lists these cells as well. And you see the term B cell, we just talked about that, and a plasma cell, but we don't know what that is yet, so just hold on to that one. That's going to be a kind of B cell, actually. And there's another B cell, it's called a memory cell. And then we got a whole bunch of T cells, and this is by no means complete. We've got uh, T effectors which now go by the term killer T's or cytotoxic T's. Uh, the names have changed over time and sometimes that's very confusing. 
So you may want to write there, we'll come back and deal with that, uh, some of the other names for that. But a helper T, and you think of AIDS patients, and you hear the term helper T, T4, helper T4 cells, uh, that that virus attacked in with this, and time we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, you got suppressor T's, you got memory T's, and you got dendritic cells. What the heck are those? Um, but uh, those become important. And you've got null cells down at the bottom, which I don't think are even mentioned in your textbook. Uh, it's a term that, uh, that is still used for some, to some extent. Another name for them is really a natural killer, T. But it's all these fancy names and this kind of stuff that's going on. So what happens? Well, let's build a scenario out of this. Everybody OK? Doing OK? Part of that antigen 
and present it on its own membrane. And in this particular case, it's going to present that. So let's assume that this has been taken in, it's been destroyed, and we're going to stick parts of this antigen now out through the membrane, and it's going to show this 